All right, hello everyone. Um, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a new project using Spring Boot, Kotlin, and Maven. And the whole idea behind this is just to show you uh, some tips or a walking through if you are getting used to this framework or maybe the, the Kotlin language. So for this video, I I will use the IntelliJ as my IDE and Postman to create some HTTP uh, requests. For the for this sample, uh, we will create a simple REST API for a particular class, which is person, and a person will have just three uh, three attributes uh, and an ID, name, and last name. Uh, we will keep it uh, simple just to see how the framework works and some some things related to the Kotlin language. So to get started to create a Spring Boot application I think that the most easier way to do that is go to the start.spring.io and here we have a cool uh, setup manager let's say where we can choose our dependency manager which is in this case maven we can choose the language language let's choose kotlin the spring boot version um here we can put some info about how our packages are going to be called uh, this is up to you so you can put here where you want uh, for the project name let's put something like spring kotlin hyphen whatever and uh, I will keep this as jar and I'm using here the Java 8 right so let's start to add some dependencies for spring there is uh, a couple of modules as you can see here and each model will help you to resolve a specific problem. For instance, if you want to create a REST API, you will need the Spring Web module, which allows you to create uh, REST resources, has, has a Tomcat inside, uh, knows how to serial, serialization uh, classes from Java to, for instance, JSON or XML. So we are going to choose that module. Um, let's choose as well the depth tools, which allows you to like reload things without recompile everything. We are going to use Spring Data JPA because we are going to use a SQL database to make something uh, kind of production thing. Uh, we will need an, a database. Uh, since we don't have one, let's use the H2 database, which is a uh, on-memory database. Please don't use this in production. This is just for quick prototypes or tests, right? So I think that we have all the properties that we need. So let's click Generate. Download the file. And after that, you can uh, unzip, unzip everything and open it with your ID. Remember that I'm using here the IntelliJ ID, right? Um, okay, so let's navigate through our uh, project, right? We have here the Kotlin folder, the name of our packages. We have one file here which it holds the main method yeah uh, we can press run um, this will start up the framework <clears throat> you will see uh, Tomcat running in the port 8080 which is here but since our project is just new we don't have nothing yet um, Another cool uh, file that you need to know uh, what it does is this application that properties. 
the framework has a lot of property that you can uh, configure and actually there is this particular page which is the Spring Boot Appendix uh, properties you have a list here of all the properties that you can change um, by, by module right so you can go here and create some search for instance if you want to change the server part this is the property that you want but um, what I am going to do is let's remain this to a uh, uh, EML file and that's why I have a plugin right over here which is the Spring Assistant that allows you that if you are using EML files to your application properties you will have a helper here so I can start writing for instance server and then see uh, what options do I have right so I can change the port if I want so let's add uh, a simple uh, endpoint to our API right so let's add the rest controller um, that will tell to the framework that this class is now a rest controller and knows how to um, handle HTTP requests so let's create a method here a function um, for coupling this is the syntax fun the name of the function the arguments the type of the return which is going to be just on a string and we can put here some uh, high message. We need to specify as well the HTTP verb and we do that with this annotation which is the get mapping and remember that we have here the um, library roles server so I can just click here in the build and it's, just, it's going to build the, the new changes not everything. So as, as we can see here the port now is 8081 so let's try let me close this let's try to go to our local host 8081 and we have our message here so this is working um, and let me show you this image and how the actually the, the framework is working Basically, Spring has a container, an EOC container, where all of our classes are in memory during the runtime. Uh, hold up, um, all these classes, like this controller, needs to have some metadata that allows the framework to know, okay, I need to create an instance of this class and bring it to the container. That metadata is provided by this kind of annotations. So remember, with the REST controller we are telling you to the framework, okay, I want you to create an instance of this class, bring it to the container, and as well this class will know how to handle the HTTP request because it's a REST controller. So by default a REST controller always will return and receive JSON objects. Um, so uh, let's move on. Let's go back to the 8080, right? And uh, let's start with the or person class, which is what are we going to use in this uh, video. Let's create a new package, call it domain, and let's create some um, data class, call it person, right? So in Kotlin, a data class is basically, we will have a contractor right over here, and we can put the attribute here, and for each attribute in this data class, we will have a getter method a setter method, we will have 
the to string method for this class, we will have the equals, the hash code, and so on. So uh, be careful because for the equals and the hash code, it will use everything that we we put here in this constructor. So let's say that the person has an ID of type long. Let's say that it has a name, which is a string. This is the syntax. Val means that this is final, so it can change. Um, this is the name of the attribute and then the type of that. And let's put uh, a last name and a string too, but with a um, question mark at the end. So Kotlin allows us to create default values to put in the equal signal right here and I, I can put something like this. So this means that I can create a person without, without a name and the default value will be an empty string. Let's see what happens if I try to put a null value here. We have an error saying that I can put a null value in an attribute which can hold null values because by default Kotlin doesn't allow null values. Um, if we want to, even though put a null value, we need the question mark. This means this, that this value, this attribute is, a, is the type of the type string and can hold null values. And by default, uh, we will put a null value. And for the ID, let's put uh, a one, right? Um, let's let's do some quick. Uh, let's return a person here, just to just to try how this works. In Kotlin, we don't have the new keyword as we have in in Java. So let's create a person here. Um, let's change the return type from a string to person. This is the default constructor. Let's see what happened with this. Remember that our default is ID one, uh, name empty, and last name null. Let's go back here and let's write um, 8080 again. So we have our JSON right over here, ID one, name empty, and last name null. So uh, let's use some arguments right here. Let's say that I just want to change the name. So I will write name equal, um, put a name here. Let's try this again. And uh, let's go back here, refresh this. We have our name, right? Uh, let's say that I want to put the last name first. So let's put last name and let's um, try the changes once again. So this is working. So what are we going to do now is um, let's create some layers, right? Because we will have a couple of layers to have our application uh, management. So let's create some layers like the data access layer, which will allow allows us to communicate to our database or wherever our source of data is. In this case, we are going to use a database, a SQL database. Let's write a DTO layer, which is for all the data transfer that we have, for instance, each request is must be an object and each re respond as well. Let's write um, a service layer, which is for the business logic that our application will have. And let's move this controller to actually a, a resource package, okay? So let's start with that. 